Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome to my latest video tutorial. Uh, this week I'm going to show you how to do a walk cycle in Blender 2.5. Um, this is probably going to be a two-parter, possibly a three-parter, depending on how in-depth I want to go. Um, so for this first video I'll just be going into uh, how to get the basic walk cycle down and get it sort of going. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, Sintel light rig that I got from Blendswap, um, which is a nice website, blendswap.com, and you can go there and just search for Sintel light and it'll come up uh, with this. And you can download it and start using it straight away. Um, it did come with sort of a default scene. Uh, in these two layers here, so I just sort of I've turned all that off, uh, so I can just see the character, and I've also turned off the textures uh, that are under here, textured solid. Turn that off to help increase the frame rate. Um, turn it with uh, simplify on, turn all that down, uh, and. Lastly, I'll set the frame rate to 24 frames per second. Um, this is a good frame rate if you're animating to go at. Um, if you're just doing your own stuff, it's probably the best one you could go with because it's easily divisible. So if you want to do half a second, uh, you do 12 frames, quarter of a second, six frames, you can go down to uh, three frames for an eighth of a second. Uh, for any sort of movement and it helps keep everything sort of organized and in nice even numbers. Um, it's the sort of frame rate that all the greats used during you know doing their Disney animations and all that. Um, I believe the standard nowadays is 30 frames per second but don't quote me on that. Um, I think that's all you need to know for the setup just pretty much turn everything off and make it usable. Uh, I've created an action here which you can just do. Oh, I did um, turn off the pose because there was a pose on so just select every all the bones with uh, A, Alt G and Alt R to turn off any movement and I did a Alt S as well just in case anything was scaled but nothing was. Um, so yeah I created a new action. Um, this is terribly spelt walk cycle. Uh, just has to go on and I'll zoom in so it's pretty close okay. Uh, but for when I'm doing playback um, I'll be activating the frame dropping because I still do have a bit of frame rate issue when I'm doing playback but otherwise I'm uh, pretty good to go. So um, using, or sort of using as a guide, um, the great book from Rich Williams, the Animator Survival Kit, um, and he talks about. I mean, he's got a great big section on hawk cycles. So I recommend if you're into getting your characters moving around, um, have a look at the walk cycle section because it shows you how to animate each part of the body what to do with it and all the different sort of things you can do with it which is quite fun to read and look at and have a go at yourself. Um, what we're going to be doing is just the basic standard walk cycle. Hey, he's got the poses all drawn out here so it's easy to quickly follow along. I'll be animating on 16s and that means each step, each single step, um, is going to take 16 frames. So starting on frame one, um, we're going to start off by animating the legs and see how we go from there. So the front foot go forward, so I'll just move it in the Y. I'll move down in the Z the pelvis, just get so the feet are all touching the ground. You can use this control to rotate the foot back and you want it quite a bit back and then move the foot you want a straight leg 
I might try and reduce that angle a little bit. I'll just move her back up. You don't want the knee to be completely snapped like it is right now. So just put it down. You just a little bit of bend to make sure that nothing's locking into place or anything like that because that can look quite bad in your animation. And for the back foot, just move that back. And rotate it up onto the toes. And then move it a bit further. And probably about there will do. Now I'll um, start to show you some of the cool stuff that you can do in Blender. Um, especially with animation and very good for cyclical animation. Uh, select all the bones that we just moved. Put them down there and the pelvis and you can see they're all selected here. And copy the pose and you can do that here or you can do control C. I usually just use these buttons to make sure I've got it right. And then if we'll move up to frame 17 where the next contact pose is going to be and we shall paste opposite so what's going to happen is now we've got a bit of motion here as the feet slide along the ground and our second pose is going to be on frame 9 directly in the middle so there's seven frames, I think, or eight frames either side. And you want the front foot, make sure you've got the right one selected. Alt R there to just reset that bones um, animation, or pose, sorry. And we'll move Sintel up the Z axis, and again about as far as it can without it locking into place so a little bit more up probably be about there you want this leg to be pretty much straight up and down but that said I do want it to be a little bit forwards because she just come up to that sort of point and then the back foot bring that up clear the rotation here as well and then rotate the foot so it's pretty much the sole of the foot is pointing down um, about probably move the knee a little bit more forwards about there and so now we've got an actual step and for some people that amount of leg movement might be enough uh, the amount of detail in that animation and then you can use in the copy and paste tools copy that until you've got a single or two steps one for each foot um, but, but we're not going to just leave it there what we're going to do is actually add in a couple more poses uh, one at five which will be called the down pose and what happens here is just after contact which is here uh, your body weight generally goes down because you just hit the ground and you're sort of bracing yourself um, against the ground so you don't want to because otherwise it looks a bit stiff I suppose is the best way to put it so the down pose the best way to remember it is the front foot goes down so it hits the ground and right now we're a bit too high the foot doesn't properly meet so what I did there again is Alt R to reset that rotation and in the Z axis just moves until down and we want a good amount of bend in the knee and all these poses you can you can even have the down poses just a little bit of a down, not too much, sort of about that much. But for the sake of showing all the movement, I'll exaggerate a little bit. 
Um, and then we're going to probably turn off the rotation there again. Move the foot down. Uh, and we want the toe to be sort of pointing at the ground. So it's just sort of rotated up. So we've got that pose there. Don't worry about the foot going through the floor there at the moment. Uh, that can be fixed up in the graph editor later. That's just the way the keys interpolate and you'll see on the graph the, the curves will be going down beneath the ground and you can just sort of uh, change the way the curves move. So up to frame 13 and we're just after the passing pose now so the foot passes, uh, passes across it gets ready to land and this is called the up pose and what we want is for Sintel to be on her toe as much as possible on that foot and then move her up a bit and even forwards a little bit and you want her to be or her weight to be a little bit forwards uh, especially in this pose because uh, a walk is generally accepted to be just a controlled fall so every step you take you just fall onto your foot so in order to fall you need a you need the weight to be out of balance uh, so for just for the other foot sort of it's come up and she's about to sort of rotate her foot around to put her heel down for the next contact pose. We'll probably move that back a little bit just so she's even more weighted off balance and then she'll come down and hit the ground there. So that's the full step with, with just the legs and the pelvis movement. Forwards and backwards through there. Scrubbing along, it's it's very good idea to just keep once you've sort of got your first few keys in to keep scrubbing back and forwards to have a look at the motion and see what you think. Make any small changes, make any big changes that you need to make. Um, it's best to do it now before you start getting too detailed. Uh, what we will do now, actually is animate the arms to swing along so actually noticing that it's a good idea to also check your animation from various angles because right now this leg is sticking all the way out so I'll just select that one there that's the knee control and just move it in and because that's the first pose what I'm going to do is copy that and paste it over here so that this leg has the same and the rest of that is fairly straight, so that's okay. Um, back to the arms. What we'll do is rotate them, rotate these shoulders down a little bit, just to sort of relax the shoulders. Then rotate both the arms down. Then we'll go back to the side view. And the arms generally swing opposite to the legs. So this one goes back and this one goes forwards. I'll just turn on the gizmo here for these shoulders because you want the shoulders to also be swinging. It's also good to swing the hips but I haven't done that. Um, I'll do that later on when I'm doing a bit more polishing. <laughs> 